Now, the expert tonight, your expert for Friday night, is Naomi Andrews, who is a pet behaviour counsellor. So if you've got a naughty pooch or a wayward errant cat or anything else for that matter, and you'd like to put your questions to Naomi, then now's a great time to call. Naomi will be with you in five minutes' time. So maybe you have a, an animal that's been behaving weirdly or needs a little bit of correction in terms of, of its conduct. Uh, or you're puzzled by an aspect of your pet's life. If you'd like to put a question to Naomi, the number to dial is 0370 143 133. When you text 81333, start your message with the word Dean, D-E-A-N, or you can email, it's dean.jackson at bbc.co.uk. Now, but a word of warning, not, it's not a serious warning, but what happens every week when the expert is here is that it's all a little bit slow to get started... And then, halfway through the chat with the expert, there's a deluge of calls and we can't get them all in. So if you have anything about your pets that you'd like to put to Naomi, who is a pet behavioural counsellor, a pet psychologist type of thing, really, then now is the time to call, please. Don't leave it till later. 0370 143 133 is the number to dial. If you have a pet who's either behaving oddly for some reason or maybe you need to train them to do something, anything, really, well, not ride a bicycle. I doubt she could help you with that. Or she, maybe she could. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, if, if, if the pet needs... It's, it's behaving needs a little bit of modification. Then Naomi is the person who can help you. 0370 143 133, the number to dial. And you text 8133, start your message with the word Dean. Every Friday night, I bring you an expert of the week, somebody who knows their stuff, the, the, the top of their game in their field, and I give you a chance to just get a bit of instant advice from them. And we have all sorts of things we do, uh, family history, uh, we do dream analysis, all sorts of things. Well, this week, it is Naomi Andrews who's back with you. She's a pet behaviour counsellor. Naomi, good to have you on board. Hi, yes, good to be here. Hi. Now, uh, I love to find out where our experts are on what they're doing on a Friday night. And you're not <laughs> sitting in your study at home, are you, waiting I to take calls? I am not. Calls? a nice change. <laughs> no, I'm down in London this weekend, so... Uh... Yes, visiting some friends. And you've retreated to your car. I have, yes. I'm I a do quiet it, spot. Oh, you know, do you know what? You, you've, you've spent ages going down to London. I've dragged you out of your party. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's quite all right. <laughs> so just, for, just very briefly, as yeah. a pet behaviour counsellor, what, what, yeah. what sort of spheres of influence does that involve? Um, so uh, there is no typical day, really, um, but I tend to sort of go to people's houses, meet lots of different people, lots of different animals, um, with lots of different problems, um, and do lots of training um, and sort of just help people out if they're dogs or cats or, or rabbits or uh, anything else they care to bring forward. Uh, it's having any issues and just helping them work through those uh, so that we can have some happier and healthier pets and owners. And can you apply the same sort of techniques often to different animals? So what works for a dog? Uh, will it work with a cat necessarily or is it completely different? Um, yes, so uh, a lot of the time with cats it's usually more to do with the environment. There's something in the environment, cats being a bit more independent, shall we say, than dogs. Um, so yes, there's usually something in the environment that we can change to make cats happy, but we can certainly use the same sorts of principles with cats as we can with dogs. Uh, we also learn in the same ways, so uh, yeah, we can certainly train our cats as well as our dogs. OK, we've got a question for, from uh, Kath from Melton Mowbray in just a second, but first, if you'd okay. like to put your question to Naomi, uh, then the number to dial is 0370 143 133. And whilst I love getting your texts and your emails, uh, it's just a bit easier if you phone because then uh, you can talk to Naomi and she can seek any clarification, any subsidiary questioning should she need to, to do so. 0370 143 133, the number to dial. So Kath's been on from Melton Mowbray, Naomi. She's got, okay. she's got a cat problem. Right. Uh, she, she's had a cat. It's a rescue cat. She okay, said it's, okay. it's settled in quite well at, at her house, but but it's got this habit of running up the curtains. OK, right. Is this a common thing? Um, yeah, it can be. I would. Uh, it would be nice to know in what 
uh, sort of situations, if there's certain situations or something that's actually provoking it to run up the curtains, um, whether it's something that it's worried by or whether this is just um, a good a good game. Um, so if it was something that it's worried by, then obviously it would be nice to know what that was and we could start doing some sort of slow yeah. desensitisation to that so that it doesn't have such a strong... Well, Kath describes it as playful. She said that okay. in her email, she said it's, it's not... It's not stimulated by anything, but at okay. w- one moment the cat will be sitting there quite happy. The next minute it runs up the curtain. It doesn't seem distressed, she said. In okay. fact, seems to quite enjoy it. <laughs> OK, so it's having a good time. OK, at the expense of the curtains. Uh, yeah, so I'd say if there's certain times of the day that this happens, then those would be good times to start initiating some games. So if you've got sort of those little fishing rod-style toys um, or just... Um, giving it some fuss or moving that sort of uh, tea time to those sorts of times. So targeting those particular um, uh, energy-rich times with other things to distract it, giving it plenty of things to climb on. It's, you know, more appropriate things to climb on than the curtains. Um, So making sure that obviously if it's enjoying itself doing that, that's brilliant. But if we can channel it into sort of more appropriate activities, then that would be good. So lots of scratching posts things to jump up onto and climb onto and um, really sort of using play to encourage the cat and show show the cat on other activities that are just as enjoyable but uh, don't risk the upholstery. So reading between the lines, you think it might be bored, don't you, Naomi? So potentially, yes. Yeah. Finding its own way of uh, releasing all that energy, yes, because cats do, you know, in, in the wild, they would be hunting sort of several times a day. Uh, they, they also hunt when they're not even hungry, uh, so they're quite motivated to perform a lot of these behaviours, so we need to make sure that they've got lots of outlets throughout the day for that as well. And it's interesting that Kath mentioned that it was a rescue cat. Do they pose a, a particular issue or do, they, do we face the same challenge when we take on a rescue cat as, as if we were getting out, you know, a, a cat from any other source? Um, I think it all depends on what the cat's been through. Uh, so potentially cats that have been through rescue, uh, obviously just the process of going into a rescue if it's been in a cattery, that's quite stressful for a cat. It really depends on its territory being the same um, and relies on those familiar scents and things. So being moved from from one place to another, the cattery, which might be a very busy environment full of people and other cats potentially it's never met before, then going into its new home. So things like that can trigger it. Um, But it's really about the cat's experiences. So a lot of people will have these sorts of problems, even though they've had the cat from a kitten. uh, A lot of the time, kittens will do these sorts of behaviours which seem quite cute when they're kittens. And then as they start to get a little bit bigger, it starts to get a little bit less When they start pulling the curtains down and the the, 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 the (laughs) curtain rails bowing in the middle, yeah. All right, um, I'm going to put some music on if that's all right, Naomi. Um, I've got lots of calls coming through, so I'll be back with you in just a couple of minutes if that's all right. Okay, lovely. If you have a question for Naomi Andrews, she's a pet behaviour counsellor, then now is the time. Don't delay, pick up the phone now. 0370 143 133 is the number to dial. And don't forget the icebreaker for tonight as well. One in eight house owners didn't do what before they bought their house. 0370 143 1333 is the number to dial. Day. I'm Dean Jackson. Naomi Andrews is a pet behaviour counsellor who's currently locked in a car in central London. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for doing this. I can't thank you enough. That's quite all right. Uh, Naomi, I'm going to connect you to Vicky, who's in Mapley Park. Vicky, meet okay. Naomi. Hi, Vicky. Hello, Naomi. I'm in a car as well. It's pretty horrific weather. Oh, you're in a car as well? (laughs) Um, Yes, I just pulled over to speak to Naomi. Oh, it's it's a car-to-car call. Absolutely, yes. (laughs) In good company. (laughs) Go on, Vicky, go ahead with with your question for for Naomi. Um, I wanted to ask you about my cat. Her name's um, Zelda, but she's now got the nickname Smelda because she's quite (laughs) naughty. Um, (laughs) She um, is is all quite random behaviour. She's she's a very naughty cat. She would sit on the worktop. She she quite likes to sit on the big chopping board, even though I tell her off repeatedly for doing that. And Uh the thing is, when she hears me coming, she jumps down, so she knows that it is naughty. And she helps herself to food on the worktop. Um, right. and rips the packets to bits so quite often in the morning there's just food up there's just like some cat food massacre across the kitchen floor <laughs> okay. um, yeah, she, also, she also tends to go to the toilet behind the TV on the carpet and also sometimes in the dining room which we've is all done it Vicky okay. <laughs> <laughs> she's not even gone out on the shandy they go. She's no, there's no good reason for her to be doing this she has got a litter tray um, and quite often uh, you know um 
but she'll use it. But some then for a few days she won't, um, okay. and she does go outside a lot. And um, there is one thing that I should mention: she's quite a small cat. Um, I've got two cats. One's perfectly well behaved, but she's quite small. And I have noticed that when she goes out, the other cats do tend to pick on her a little bit. So I wondered right. if it was kind of something to do with that. But my my main question is: how can I discipline her? Because I've tried shouting, I've tried chucking her out, I've tried gently kind of tapping her on the bottom, you know, just to just to mm-hmm. you know on the side, just to so that's naughty yeah. and she does seem to get that but then you know the, she just repeats the same behavior all the time so i'm a bit kind of at the end of my tether as to what to do next i really. can understand that what do you think naomi okay so i think um when it comes to behavior that we don't want um it's sort of important to realize that the cats don't know sort of right from wrong so in mm-hmm. terms of uh, punishing i would try to stick to rather than telling her off for the things that you don't want her to do try Mm -hmm. to focus on encouraging her to do the things that you would rather she do instead Mm -hmm. um so for instance with the walking on the uh the kitchen surface that's quite a a common one because the trouble is they're rewarding themselves by eating whatever it is or playing around um on there so although you're kind of you're punishing her for it she's already got what she she wants from it <laughs> so um if you can uh, as difficult as it is try and clear away as much as possible so that she doesn't have the chance to reward herself for that mm-hmm. and give her other options for other things to do so like with the the first cat we talked about making sure that there's lots of outlets there for all those different instincts and that desire to want to get up and, and play with things because it seems like mm-hmm. she's quite in her the more mischievous animals tend to be the ones that need that extra bit of of stimulation so the Mm -hmm. more games and things you can play the more enjoyment she gets out of other activities and the less rewarding it is to jump up on the side because actually there's no food there anymore then she's got no incentive really to jump up but she's Ah. got more incentive to go and do the other things so i'd say from that point of view then that might be a, a good place to start on on that front and especially if she is being picked on a little bit outside and she's mm-hmm. not perhaps feeling like she can go out and do all those things that she wants to do outside so she's finding her own way of of doing those things in the house instead in sort of situations that you really rather she she wasn't be doing, mm. be doing those is bullying a problem in the cat world then it is unfortunately mm. yes it does seem to be because we live in sort of quite densely populated areas as opposed to cats tend to to uh, move towards being more solitary creatures, uh, it is something we come across because they're naturally quite territorial. Then, mm. when we've got lots of different people in the same area, all with cats trying to sort of establish their territory, then yeah. unfortunately that does happen. Yeah. Yeah, there are about five cats um, in quite close proximity, mm. and there does okay. seem to be a hierarchy. I mean, my other cat there seems to be the boss. Oh, <laughs> so he's, okay. he's just you know, he's just so cool, he just walks around and nobody kind of gives him any hassle. And do they get um, some all right in the house then, Vicky, when they're together? Yeah, they're quite happy together. It's not a problem at all. It's a shame um, he doesn't take her out and look after her, isn't it, really? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, it. You think, it <laughs> you think he'd have a bit of brotherly love going on, you but would. No, unfortunately he doesn't care. Okay. <laughs> no, cats don't work that way, unfortunately, <laughs> do they? <laughs> all right, Vicky, it's lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much for your call. Um, I hope Thank you. You, you're going to stay in the, in the, the car till it stops raining now, are you? <laughs> I might have to, I think. <laughs> I don't want to ruin the hair, so, it's, oh, yeah. Uh, it's lovely to talk to you. Have a great weekend, Vicky. Thank you. Ta-da. Bye. Bye. Uh, Naomi, I know you're still in your car there. Can I just play yeah. one more tune and then d- put one more of question course. to you? Will that be all right? You yeah. sure that's OK? I'm aware yeah, I'm taking that's... up your precious <laughs> no, that's quite right. weekend away in London. All right, Naomi Andrews is a pet behaviour counsellor. If you've got a question for her, 0370 143 133. But this is your final warning now, because after the next call, that will be it for tonight. Naomi Andrews is a pet behavioural behaviour counsellor from around here, actually, though, they're spending the weekend um, doing other exciting things this weekend. Uh, Naomi, uh, this this email in from Bill, who says, uh, my wife uses a spray bottle filled with water. When the cats misbehave, she sprays them lightly on their side. They hate mm-hmm. the spray, but seldom, if ever, repeat the offending act. OK. Is that is that a, an authentic way to, to deal with it? Sounds as effective. Uh, yes, I mean, there's probably little argument that punishment can be an effective way of training them. Right. Uh, but I would say, from my point of view, I would rather work on what we want them to do instead. So okay. 
talking about just now it's much sort of nicer for the cats as well or, or the dogs perhaps um to if they are more clear on what they can do so it's a more rewarding experience and it doesn't sort of risk your relationship with them because we don't want to risk them seeing us as sort of um not very nice things in their life it's sort of down yeah. to us really to try and teach them what we would like them to do instead okay so it's, it would be classed as a punishment would it then using the water bottle yeah, so anything that's designed to to sort of reduce behaviour in that kind of way, yeah. yes, it's, you know, as mild as it might be, it is sort of clashed, classed as, as a punishment, okay. although it's not as bad as it could be. It's, no, no, yeah, no. I would, yeah. Well, it, it, it's absolutely cat-tastic tonight because <laughs> I, I've just got, uh, well, I mean, we could go on all night, so, but one more to put to you. This is from Wolfie, who's on the M1 tonight. He mm-hmm. says, Naomi, how can I stop other cats from using the cat flap and wandering in? Okay, so I don't want sort of... a flap that's automatic or linked to the cat collar, really. Right. Okay. Is there a way um, around that? So uh, it is more difficult if you'd if you'd rather not. I mean, those are quite effective ways of doing it. If you if you can, you can have ones. If it's the actual collar itself that you'd rather not have on the cat, then you can get ones that work off their microchip as well. So then they don't actually necessarily need to have a collar whilst oh. they're out and about. But the the cat flap actually detects the microchip in them, and so that opens when they're in a, within a certain distance of of the cat flap. So they, that can be a, a quite effective way of doing that otherwise it, depending on the resident cat you can um, cat proof your um, your garden if you like but obviously that then prevents your cat from yes. being able to sort of go further than the garden so it depends on the needs of the resident cat as well uh, sometimes if you've got particularly um, friendly neighbours and you know whose cat it is sometimes you can set up quite successful sort of timeshare situations <laughs> where one person has their cat in and the other person has it out and then you can swap round which obviously saves the uh, the microchip sort of so often the option, the, but... yeah, the 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 the, 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 the simple idea is the most effective aren't they sometimes <laughs> absolutely yes sometimes just physically preventing it from from yeah. happening in that respect can be a good option yeah but that's fascinating that the so that so if if a cat has been microchipped mm-hmm. you can get some cat flaps that will identify the cat based on the microchip in it. Yeah, that's absolutely. It's incredible. I didn't know that. Details in, so you can, it works on, obviously, you can put in as many cats as you need to into that as well, and then, yeah, it will unlock when that cat's within a certain distance of the flap and then lock again. So, yeah, those can be quite good. That's amazing. All right, Naomi, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bless you for thank being you here. Uh, if people <laughs> wanted to, to find out more, contact you during the course of the week, there is a website, isn't there? Yes, yeah, so you can find me at www.basketcasepetbehaviour.co.uk. So it's basketcasepetbehaviour.co.uk if you'd like to find out more and get in touch with Naomi. Thank you so much, much appreciated. Enjoy your weekend. Nice to to be on. And I hope we can do it again in a few months' time, maybe. Yeah, I look forward to it. Thanks, Naomi. Take care. Okay, bye. bye. Naomi Andrews, who is a pet behaviour counsellor. If you'd like to find out more, then the website is basketcasepetbehaviour.co.uk. 